welcome back. So if you watched my last video where I did an Umbrillion's Essentials tutorial, today we're actually going to make that shirt. Little Miss Elena is here with me right now, but it's nap time, so she'll be leaving and I will be able to get started. I have a size 2T AJ Blanks embroidery shirt. I have some of my materials already ready to go. And I have my design and my printout from Embrillion's Essentials. If you did not watch that video, please do so and you'll see exactly why I do this. And how I made my step-by-step -step guide with um, all the colors that I need. But today will be a little bit different for embroidery because I'm going to use my magnetic hoop for the first time. So I do have the Brother PE800 and um, I did just get, recently anyway, the magnetic hoop. So I'm going to use this and review it, see how well it does for me. So unfortunately this will not be a step-by-step -step, um, applique video. I'm not going to show each step, but I am going to record the whole process and in the end give my review over the hoop. If anyone's interested in like another full-length tutorial on applique on the Brother PE800, then just let me know. Um, I have been wanting to do another one because the last one I did, even though it has actually been pretty popular, like I'm not going to lie, it is actually my most popular YouTube video. <sighs> But I did it on my old camera. I didn't have lighting. I didn't have my nice new basement studio, things like that. Yeah, mamas. Um, so I'd like to redo the video so that this time you can hear me more clearly. Yeah. This time you can hear me more clearly and things like that. So I will get around to that, but it was like a behemoth of a video. It took me a long time to do it, a long time to edit it. Oh my God, it took so long to edit it. So I will get there. But if you're interested, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll get there faster. Later. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye so you go nap time. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye, YouTube. Divas. So here's the magnetic hoop. This is the guide. Um, the material of this, it's metal, but the top is kind of flocked and that helps the material from not slipping. And then the back is like just regular metal. These are the magnets it came with. These are really strong magnet magnets. This is not like your normal refrigerator magnet. Like these puppies are strong. So basically it's a hoop without a second like layer so you don't have to twist. Because I really hate hooping. I can't wait to eventually get a multi-needle machine so I don't have to hoop anymore. So I'm hoping this helps. But basically these magnets keep everything in place and you place them how you need them around. So to make it easier, it would kind of be best. So this is my stabilizer. Um, this is just a tearaway stabilizer. I know I should use cutaway, but I still have a stack of tearaway stabilizer, so I'm going to use this because I'm not going to waste product. But to make this the easiest, the tearaway or the stabilizer in general should be able to go on back, my shirt on front, and I should be able to just line it up and it would be the easiest way to hoop. The only problem is getting it to stay there. Um, so the best way that I've seen and kind of researched is to use the spray, the basting adhesive to get it to stick to the back or unless you're just using sticky stabilizer which I've been thinking about getting but again I want to use my stash of what I have so let's try this I'm going to try this method of spraying directly on my stabilizer and see if I can get it to like at least stick to this and then stick to the shirt No fuss, it's stuck. Okay, so now, but look, careful. You can put this guy away. So now I'm gonna take my shirt and um, fold it in half and press it. So I'm gonna press it anyways to get the wrinkles out, the fold lines. Then I'm gonna fold it in half to get my fold line down the middle of the shirt on the heat press. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my pencil and my guide and mark like the middle of my stabilizer. And if you look on this guide, there are like um, notches right here. 
so that'll tell you it'll fit in with this like big notch here so you know what's the middle So now that I have, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, I have that labeled. I know that this is the middle going down of my area, so I'm going to make sure that I lay this there. Now the only thing I, what I need to do now is turn the shirt inside out. So to touch this top of the, touching the, the stabilizer itself, I want the back, the inside of the front of the shirt. So if the tag is here, you know this is the back of the shirt. This is the front of the shirt, but the inside of it. So this is the front front, and then this is the inside of it. So really I should have um, marked it on this side, but you know, I can still see the line. I'm going to press it again just for good measure. Okay, much better. Also, if I haven't said this enough, again, this is AJ Blanks from Angela Jasmina. These are like the best blanks ever for embroidery. They're nice, thick, quality material. The sizing is great, everything. They're just amazing. So make sure when you get your blanks, ajblanks.com. So now that I have the middle marked, I can go ahead and just lay this across the markings that I made. But I also need to determine like how far up I want the design. So this is the entire design field. I want it to probably start around here. So I'm going to push this up towards the top. Make sure I'm on that middle line. Then I can spread it out. And again, my tag should now be in the front, so this should be the back of the front shirt. Now I can begin placing some of my magnets so to make it easier to kind of flip this around. Wow, that like sticks ridiculously. Okay, I at least place four so it'll like hold it. So I can take a look and I can place this back on there to make sure that um, everything's aligned. Okay, see that I don't like. I definitely don't like that. So it still looks aligned with my fold. Um, that's why it's good to heat press it. Still looks good, still looks aligned, but I just gotta make sure I'm careful with my magnets. Cool. 
I've been I've, I've heard to be careful putting one here since this is a little bit shorter since this is here and you don't want the needle to come in contact with the magnet so I'm not gonna put one there but if anything I'll put it there okay so technically I should be hooped we shall see let's find out together Let's reflip this puppy. Carefully to not disturb my magnets. Okay. Looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and place it on the machine. It's on there perfectly, even though it's not uh, from brother. This um, this hoop. It did slide under very nicely since it's so much thinner than the standard hoop. So I'm going to go ahead and embroider the shirt. Um, my first step that I'm going to do is put the heat and bond on the back of my applique fabric. I usually like to just get that done and over with in the beginning and then start embroidering and then I can turn off my heat press for a while because it does make it extra hot and it's just that's just wasting more electricity for no reason and heat. So um, yeah then I'll go ahead and turn it back on at the end to do like a final heat press of the shirt and also to apply the tender touch for the back of the shirt once everything's said and done but so i use my heat press in the beginning turn it off for a long shirt like this if i'm not doing anything else and then return it back on at the end so i'll go ahead and speed things up and just work for now it's been a while since i've done any embroidery so i feel like out of practice i need to get back on the horse so wish me luck um the baby's birthday's tomorrow oh my gosh i'm so sad i can't even we can't even do a party because of covid but um yeah so i'm gonna get started no te deseo el mal Pero ojalá se te escape mi nombre Cuando lo hagas baby no te asombre Los dos sabemos que no me mereces Lo sé Yo perdí mi tiempo, yeah Y tú alguien que te amaba Es que eso no lo entiendo, yeah Si es que duda me besaba No sé qué imaginar, yeah Que me iba a virar, yeah Es que tan falsa te siento, yeah Como cosa comedín china, yeah, yeah Aprendí mi soledad, no de las mujeres Fingir que no te hirió, eso doble duele Es como siendo un sol viviendo en la nieve Esto es un juego y nada más. Si falla ella, perdemos todo sin hacer yo nada. Baby, es que ya está. Fuiste muy bella, pero por dentro no tenías nada. Por eso yo no espero nada de nadie, pero todo es mi amor. Ya no. Baby, yo te voy a ser muy honesto. No te quiero aquí ya no. Okay, so I just finished doing the satin stitch for the number one. One thing I just wanted to point out, notice how there's satin stitch here all the way around and there's none here. This is because if you watch my In Brilliance video, I set it up to hide the hidden stitches. So these are the hidden stitches so that you see only here does a satin stitch because that's what you're going to see. But here you're not going to see it. it's going to overlap with the other applique with the other satin stitch for the dog. So this is important so that you can um, avoid needle breakages and things like that and it won't be so bulky. So I just wanted to show you this is kind of the result of that. Also in following my guide, you see remember I set up gunpowder as always the um, placement stitch. And then deep lilac is the um, 
tack down stitch and then any other color is what is an actual satin stitch and I need that color so the first time I needed a color was the true blue and now from here you see gunpowder deep lilac gunpowder deep lilac so it's just a bunch of applique steps until we finally get down to this step right here and step number 10 is where I need the brown for the dog brunette so all of these steps it doesn't matter what color because they're just tacked down and um, positioning stitches so I went ahead and changed my thread now and made it the um, the brown color the brunette since that's the next satin stitch, stitch I'm gonna need so I'll just let this go for each step but it is important to note that the reason why you do put different colors in in brilliance is so that your machine will stop so if you made all of these steps the same color your machine would not stop and you would not get a chance to cut your applique fabric so make sure you put different colors in there but just put colors that you will automatically recognize as being your tack down and your positioning stitch <laughs> Inocente como la vez Se volvió madura La niñez es por un pobre bobo Que le fue infiel Ya no se enamora cuenta las veces La leyenda dice que ahora está bien Que es independiente Se lo merece Me dicen que nada es, nada es muy bien Se aquí bien mojada con tantos peces Ella quiere gozar Con el rum me dice pásalo Ella se quiere olvidar De que la traición Okay, so here's the finished product. You may not be able to see from there, but there are mistakes. And I blame the mistakes on part of the design itself. This is my first time stitching out this design. But look really close at the legs. Look how the satin stitch is completely off. Can you see it? I see it a mile away. But when I look from here, okay, when I look from a mile away, I can't see it. But um, yeah, that's not the only place where that problem exists. That problem exists in a few other places and I got really frustrated. I almost threw the whole thing away. But this is just a quick reminder that obviously you're gonna strive for quality, especially if you have an Etsy shop. You always strive for quality when you're in business. But always remember too that we are our worst enemy, always. We're our number one critic. So. I'll probably give this to my cousin. Well, not probably. I'm going to give this to my cousin for his son. And I'm going to be like, oh my God, I'm sorry. There's a lot of mistakes. There's a lot of things off. And he's going to be like, I don't see anything off. But I see it. I see it. And I know it's there. So the moral of the story is don't give up. Even when things look really bad. Because especially in the middle there, I was like, this is horrible. There's no way it's going to come out right. But it came out decent enough. I'm satisfied with it. I'm letting my OCD go to the side and just being satisfied with it. But don't give up, keep trying. And if you're gonna sell a design or even give it away, definitely stitch it out first, try it out, because you never know what kind of problems exist in the file. Um, as for the review for the magnetic hoop, I really do love it because it made my hooping experience that much easier because I absolutely hate hooping and I, I just always have so many problems and I just hate it, I just hate it. So I like the magnetic hoop. Um, there, I feel like there's a learning curve with it in the way of like when I flip the shirt back over to make it easier to cut around the applique. Um, I feel like sometimes the magnets get a little bit shifted, but as long as the shirt is sticking to the um, stabilizer with some spray, I think you're good because I was good. It did line, I mean, I lined it up so perfectly, so easily. Like that was the easiest lineup I've ever done for embroidery, so that was nice. And uh, as you see, it came out pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied with it. So I do really like the um, magnetic hoop. Um, I'll put it in the link. I'll put the link in the description down below if anybody's interested in it. I did get it off of Amazon. So that's almost everything I have for today. The only thing is I have to say this because I'm just completely shocked and I'm fangirling right now. But if anyone watched my video about my first year on YouTube 
and you know at the end I kind of just like shouted out some other youtubers just you know spread the love things like that one of them just commented on my video and said thanks for the shout out and it was Mr. Crafty Pants and I am starstruck because he has almost 200,000 subscribers. He has like 189 or something and he's amazing and he just shouted me out and then he said he subscribed to my channel. I'm like nobody and he just subscribed to my channel. I took a screenshot of this to show my sister because I'm in awe. I cannot believe this just happened. I cannot believe like like I'm embarrassed of my channel right now if he's gonna watch anything. But anyways, thank you Mr. Crafty Pants. You're so sweet. I just love you. You're awesome. Okay, so that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching, guys. I told you I'd get back to embroidery. My shop is not open yet because, you know, got a few more weeks left. This baby cooking in the oven. But um, my shop will be open soon. I'm just working on some things. Working on lots of things, okay? All right, thanks for coming back, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, liking, commenting. I really appreciate all of you guys always. See you next time. Bye.